for the first podcast, I chose something that's pretty near and dear to my heart, uh, food. Specifically, junk food. Or the Japanese word for this is okashi. And okashi generally refers to the more traditional type sweets. Uh, things like dango, stuff that's been around for centuries. So we'll start with those. Despite their age, traditional sweets are still insanely popular. You can get them anywhere you go. Um, holidays, special occasions, street vendors, tea ceremonies, festivals, you name it. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of traditional sweets, but that's because a lot of them, a raving ton, you would not believe how many, are made with adzuki paste, which is red bean paste. And I, I grew up here in the States, and big things here, sweet, sugary, cinnamon, salt, those things, those are all fine and good. But red bean paste, not so much. So I'm more of a fan of the modern sweets, to be honest. However, for your viewing enjoyment, and because it would make the show a lot more Japanese to have a woman trying various foods and shouting, Oishi! Let's go ahead and sample some of these and see how they hold up. Let's start with one that's pretty iconic in manga and anime, the dango. Dango are essentially just Japanese rice cakes, that's all they are. Um, they're eaten on lots of different occasions in Japan, but there's different types for each purpose. Uh, you've got the hanami dango, which are made for flower viewing festivals, um, goma dango, which have sesame seeds on them, and so on and so forth. Uh, they're really, really popular all year round in Japan in their various varieties, and you can get them just about anywhere. Um, street vendors, but especially at tea ceremonies and uh, summer festivals. If you go to a tea ceremony, at some point it will probably involve you being served three dango served together on a stick. The ones I have here are called shoshoku dango, and they're pretty close to hanami dango in that they have the three colors. And each of the three different colors is supposed to symbolize something else about them, like the white ones represent purity, uh, the red ones represent heart and soul, and so on and so forth. Let's give these a try and see how they work. Okay, we've got a red one. Let's see how this works. Oh god. There's red bean paste. Mmm. Yeah, not a fan. Not a fan of the red bean paste. Not at all. Mm-mm. 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 Okay. Maybe. Okay, so we can now pretty much safely determine that these are the flavored kind. With fillings in the middle. Um, okay, red ones are gonna be red bean paste. We can hope for better from white and green, right? Um, there's red bean paste in these two. That, that's just not possible. Moving right along then to, sadly, another one that I'm not too terribly excited to try. We have taiyaki. And taiyaki are essentially just fish-shaped uh, wheat cakes. They've got uh, wheat breading outside and some kind of filling in the middle. Uh, they've been around since 1909 when they were first baked in the Azabu section of Tokyo, and they're now very popular at uh, snack food stands all over Japan, and also very, very popular at festivals. You'll find that a lot of these traditional sweets, um, takoyaki, taiyaki, daifuku, all those, are really, really popular at festivals. Now see, I'd be pretty pretty okay with this if I had like chocolate filled ones, or custard filled ones, or any of the other tasty ones. But in the interest of traditionalism and integrity and honesty, I went with the most common and most popular filling you can get in a taiyaki cake, adzuki, the aforementioned red bean of terribleness. So let's go ahead and give this one a go. Bottoms up. Hmm? Huh. Seems I was horribly mistaken. These don't have filling at all. Well, without the filling, they're kind of bland, to be honest. Not really much of a taste. I guess kind of sweet, if I had to pick something. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, this next food should be pretty innocuous, I hope. We've got some rice crackers, and hopefully these are plain enough to help wash away that terrible adzuki taste that is still in my mouth. Um, rice crackers are pretty common. You can get them just about anywhere at any grocery store, and they're meant to be eaten kind of like we eat chips here. 
Um, it actually used to be that you could get your own made in the streets. Um, basically, children would go out to these carts that would come down the road. Um, they'd get some money and some grains of rice from their parents, and they'd run out to the operator. Um, these carts are basically the equivalency of ice cream trucks here. But you'd run out, and you'd give the operator your rice, and probably like 10 yen or so. Um, he'd throw your rice into the machine, and there'd be a huge popping noise, and you'd have rice crackers. So, let's go ahead and try these, and with any luck, we'll get rid of the adzuki. Um, there's powder on the outside. They're pretty salty or flavorful looking. Let's see. More dense than I was expecting, definitely. Um, what flavoring's on here? Mmm. Looks like they're just flavored with brown sugar and salt. They're actually pretty good. Alright, let's move on to the modern foods now, which I've been looking forward to, despite the fact that I like Botan rice candy. Let's start with the one that has huge inroads in America already. Paki. Paki is all over anime, all over manga, all over Japan, all over... You can get it in grocery stores here in America now. It's, you can go to the Tom Thumb down the street and get a box of Pocky. It'll be overpriced, but it'll be Pocky. In Japan, you're pretty much walking by a box of Pocky every five minutes, if not more. And they also have the most insane commercials for them over there. They pay really big money to get huge stars behind this stuff, like the girls from Morning Musume. Uh, Morning Musume being the most popular and iconic female girl J-pop band in existence. Pocky was first made in 1966 by the Glico Corporation, and it's gone on to be the most popular Japanese snack food today. All it is, it's just chocolate-coated biscuit sticks. See? It says so on the box. Chocolate cream covered biscuit sticks. That simple. But I think that simplicity has a lot to do with its popularity. Because, I mean, who can hate a biscuit stick covered in chocolate? It's pretty simple. The word Pocky derives from the sound that the Japanese people believe is made when you bite into one of the sticks. Uh, poking. And there's tons of different varieties of this all over Japan. There's strawberry, caramel, milk, honey, all sorts of stuff. And we can see the anatomy of a poppy stick here in a bit. Let's use the little ridges there. Yeah, they've all melted together. That's kind of the problem with living in Texas. All of your chocolate will melt together. So let's just get the chocolate brick out here. Anyway, this is what... A horde of Pocky Sticks looks like. They've also kind of broken during shipping. So, we've got our chocolate Pocky Horde here. Yep, still good. And as you can see, you do get like 20, 30 Pocky Sticks in there. So, pretty good deal. Right on the heels of Pocky, you have Pretz. Pretz are also made by the Glico Corporation, and they're really the same thing as Pocky. You've got a biscuit stick with flavor. However, they differ in one very, very important way. Whereas Pocky are more sweet, uh, meant to be more dessert type stuff, uh, you've got flavors like chocolate, strawberry, etc. Pretz are definitely more savory. They're meant to be eaten like chips. Their flavors are things like salad, beer, pizza, corn, roasted chicken, stuff like that. Also, in my opinion, Pretz has much better commercials. You, you saw nothing. At all. But they also have this one commercial that is bar none, by far, my absolute favorite commercial in the history of Japanese commercials. If Lay's and Rolled Gold had commercials like that in the U.S., I guarantee a lot more people would be eating chips and pretzels right now. However, there's, I mean, there's just not a lot more to say about pretz that hasn't already really been said about Pocky. They're ubiquitous, they're tasty, they're convenient, 
they're really good. Um, the kind I have here are salad pretz, and they're not salad flavored, they're meant to be eaten with salad. They taste something like croutons and garlic sticks, but these are my absolute favorite. Pizza is a close second. Pizza was pretty good too. Also, like Pocky, these can be eaten very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Lastly, for our modern candies, we have Chelsea Candy. And these were released in, by the Meiji Corporation back in 1971. And at the time, it was a brand new flavor to be on the Japanese snack market, uh, butterscotch. Um, let's see, at the time, they wanted it to have uh, the design and the marketing to be like, they said it, they wanted it to be British and fancy and expensive looking. So we got, this is our packaging. I personally look at this and I see 60s London flower child, but I guess that's kind of what they were going for in the end. You, you got the British part in there. Um, a really popular song in Japan is the song that's been on every single Chelsea candy ad since they were released back in 1971. They've just had different artists singing it over the years. I actually never had these either, despite their popularity, age, and all that. But I like Werther's original, so maybe that means I'll like these. Let's see how they compare. Hmm. Okay, it's a hard candy. In fact, it tastes almost exactly like a Werther's original. A little saltier. Still really good, like almost exactly like a Werther's original. I think Werther's original outdates these though. We have one category left to cover, soft drinks. The first one is just as popular as Pocky is, ramen egg. This stuff is everywhere. You can't escape it. You can try, but you won't. You can always tell who's like a giant otaku anime fan here in the States, because they'll be the ones sitting at sushi bars drinking ramen despite the fact that there's other drink options and ramen and sushi don't go well together at all. This stuff is really, really popular in Japanese summertime. It's considered an iconic symbol. We've got beach balls, sunglasses, and stuff here. They've got ramen this is definitely one of the oldest snack foods around today. It was made by the Nishimoto Trading Company back in 1876. My god. Ramane is known for its distinct bottle design. Um, the bottle is vacuum sealed here at the top with a marble. To open it, you take the plunger that's included in the little ring that comes on top of the bottle, and you put it, you can see the marble right here, and you put the plunger on, and you find some kind of surface, with some force behind it, and you've got your drop and drink. Once popped, as you can see, it's resting here right along the bottom. And these little dimples in the side um, help hold the marble in place while you drink it so that it doesn't rise up to the top. This is a very, very nice soft flavor, typical for the Japanese to like it then, but it's just really nice to drink, especially when you're really thirsty on a summer day, which is its main purpose in life. So. Next up is the pretty popular CC Lemon. This is especially known in recent times because of an ad campaign they started about five years ago that featured The Simpsons. Um, the main selling point of CC Lemon is the fact that it has 70 lemons worth of vitamin C in this bottle. However, I've done some math and I'm pretty sure I'm very skeptical on this claim because your average uh, lemon has about, is about 113, 118 grams. And for every 100 grams of lemon, you have about 46 milligrams of vitamin C. So doing the math, if you've got, let's say, about 46 grams of vitamin C in every lemon, maybe a little more, so let's round up to 50. Um, if you've got, let's see, this says 286 milligrams worth of vitamin C in the bottle, that's only about five lemons. So... I don't know where they're getting 70 from. It's pretty tasty, though I will have to admit they ha they make hard candies with this flavor in them, and I honestly like the hard candy version of this better. It's very citrusy and very sour. It's sweet enough, like you can drink it, but it's it's more sh it's a stronger flavor than ramen. -A, though this one is obviously more commonly billed as a health drink when it's not being billed by The Simpsons. Well. That's all the snack food that my budget's allowed for me to buy now, but I hope I've done a good job of showing you the world of Japanese snack food, and maybe next time that you're at a Tom Thumb or another grocery store and you see Pocky or something, you'll pick some up and try it. I mean, the modern Japanese snack foods are a lot like our American ones. They've got the same kind of flavors. You've got salty, sweet, chocolate. I mean, the traditional ones, you're probably not going to find that commonly in the U.S. anyway, and they're also laced with red bean paste. 
but I'll let you make up your own minds on what you think on the Adzuki matter.